Chapter 41, in which objects in mirror are closer than they appear. What did he say? Parker asked. He either wants us to stand up or undress, I said, but considering the context... Parker stood up with her hands raised, then looked at me and whispered, He's a little guy. Okay, so? So, I think we can take him. He doesn't even have a gun. That's a terrible idea, I said, and stood next to Parker with my hands in the air. The policeman was ten yards away. He had a neatly trimmed mustache and wore dark blue pants with a light blue shirt. He reminded me a little of Lando Calrissian, only he was white and spoke French. What did he say? Parker asked, after the policeman shouted something I didn't catch. I'm not sure. Everyone here talks too fast. Tell me again how you won the top French award? I did figure out he wanted us to stand up, I said. The policeman yelled something else, and we stopped arguing and looked back at him. Parker was right. He was small. And apart from the baton hanging from his belt, he didn't appear armed. But he'd parked his little blue patrol car behind Ramey's, so even if we knocked him down and ran for it, we'd still end up in a car chase. And as a general rule, I try to avoid car chases. The policeman spoke again, and this time I caught the words, Voiture volée and cursed under my breath. What? Parker said. He said something about a stolen car. I think he's accusing us of stealing Ramy's car. Shit, Parker said. What's the French word for sorry? Pardon. Wait, are you going to apologize for stealing a car? I don't think that will... Pardon, Parker said, walking toward the policeman with both hands held high over her head. Pardon. Pardon. Say it, Edwin Green. Pardon, I said. Louder, Parker said. Pardon, I said again, this time with feeling. We succeeded in confusing the policeman for a moment, but then he pulled his baton and began waving it at us and shouting in agitated French. We stopped. Then Parker proceeded to perform a brief medley of early outcast songs for the confused policeman. And in one of the more terrible seconds of my life, I understood she'd only been trying to distract him long enough for Garland to sneak up from behind. Sneak up from behind with that damn pistol. No, I said, looking at Parker. Tell me we're not doing this. Well, we're not letting the French Barney Fife arrest us, Edwin Green. So if you've got a better idea, you'll need to implement it in the next six seconds or so. I looked back at Garland, and following the panic in my eyes, the policeman turned around, only to see a ninety-year-old man aiming a gun at his face. Garland, please don't shoot him, I begged, and Garland said, Son, I'm not going to shoot him. This thing isn't even loaded. But Pierre here doesn't know that, do you, Pierre? And he thrust the gun toward the policeman, who flinched and dropped his baton and likely wet his pants. Don't just stand there, get to the car, Garland growled at us. And son, how do I tell this fella to stay put? Rest, I think, or maybe restera. I always confuse my tenses. Rest, restra, Garland shouted at the policeman, who shrugged like that went without saying. Parker and I waited on the road as Garland backed up, leaving the policeman twenty yards away in the field of canola flowers. Here, son, Garland said to me, keep this pointed at him, and he tried to hand me the gun. No, I shouted, I'm not pointing a gun at a policeman. Damn it, son, I told you it's not loaded, Garland shouted back. But I walked away, so he handed the gun to Parker, who wasn't nearly as bothered by the pistol, now that she knew it wasn't loaded. Five in the clip and one in the hole, Parker Dog is about to make a body turn cold, Parker rapped then laughed at herself, and the poor policeman looked equal parts baffled and terrified. And this is where my memory of that moment's events begins to blur. 
not because I'm trying to avoid prosecution, the French Barney Fife later corroborated my story, but because traumatic events involving large explosions can affect the memories of eyewitnesses. I was in the car, watching Garland in the mirror until he ducked behind the policeman's car. Then I glanced back at Parker. She was still rapping, and had either just said, and Parker don't stop because it's 187 on a rural French cop, or, and when Parker pulls out her jammy, get ready because she might go blau, when she squeezed the trigger on what was in fact a very loaded gun. A bullet exploded from the barrel and missed the policeman's head by maybe six inches. Parker screamed and dropped the gun, and the policeman screamed and took off running through the canola field and I put my head in my hands and tried hard to wake up from what had to be a terrible dream. Seconds later, Garland slammed the door and said, Drive, son! I didn't respond because I thought maybe if I didn't, none of what just happened would be real. Damn it, son, drive! Garland shouted, this time slapping me on the back of the head. Drive fast! So I stomped the accelerator, and we squealed down that sleepy French road, and though I didn't want to know, I was about to ask Garland what he'd been doing to the policeman's car when I saw the explosion in my rearview mirror. That's when I realized I'd spend a large part of my life in a French prison. 